Okay, this is section 8.2. We're going to talk about how we can understand and use geometric sequences. So let's write the word geometric right here. So by the time we're done today, we'll be pros at geometric sequences. Uh, the last section we talked about arithmetic sequences. So we're going to have, this is a totally different type of sequence. It works differently, but we're, we're still going to have two different formulas for it. We're going to have a general formula and we're going to have a uh, recursive formula. So to warm up today, here's what we're going to take a look at. We're going to try and simplify these problems without a calculator. And keep in mind, does it make a difference if there's parentheses on here? Well, I'm hoping you remember that uh, any number to the zero power, that's going to be one. So this one is a piece of cake, hopefully. If we take a look at the next one, remember, the fact that this is in parentheses means the exponent applies to everything here. So there's one negative, there's one one on the top, and there's one two on the bottom. So the answer on this one is just negative negative one half. So we're in good shape there. And then again, because there are parentheses on here, now if there weren't parentheses on here, there would only be one negative. But because there's parentheses and the exponent is two, there are two negatives. And a negative times a negative is a positive and two ones. So this is one squared on the top and two squared on the bottom. So this is an, an, gonna end up being positive one fourth because we square the one and square the two. And then we've got negative one half raised to the third power. So we're gonna have three negatives. That's gonna be a negative. 1 cubed is 1 on the top, and then 2 cubed, so 2 times 2 times 2, that's going to end up being 8 on the bottom. So you'll notice a bit of a pattern with what we've got going here. Um, the next one definitely breaks the pattern, but when we simplified each one of these, we got a fraction, which isn't our favorite to work with, but you'll notice when they were odd exponents, they turned out to be negative. Uh, on uh, these two problems here. And then on A and C, we ended up with a positive one and a positive one fourth. Now, if we take a look at this last one, I did say try and simplify this. So if we try and simplify this, a lot of times people will come back and they'll take a look at this after having a break from exponents for a while and they'll look at that and they'll go, oh, I know what it is. That's gonna be 12 to the X and I'll just write that down as the answer, okay? That is not what it is. Now remember, with the order of operations, we always do parentheses, exponents, and then we do multiplication. So if we apply, apply this exponent, that exponent only applies to what it's over. The six is not in parentheses, and if we were to multiply the six and the two together, that means there would be that many x's, or sorry, that many sixes also. So the deal with this one is we're done. You can't simplify it at all. So you just want to keep that in mind when we're writing uh, answers to today's work. Uh, we want to make sure that our answers are very clear. So in the last section, we dealt with arithmetic sequences, and all of those had a common difference between each pair of terms. So we'll write the word difference right here. In this section, we're going to deal with a different type of sequence and see if you can figure out how these sequences work. So this is example one. I've got three different uh, formulas right here. So this is a sub n. So remember, we call that the nth term formula, the general formula, or the explicit formula. Those are all the same, uh, different words to mean the same thing. So we're going to find the first one, and the second one, and the third one, and the fourth one. And I find it really helpful to kind of write those out. I know what I'm plugging in for the first one, and the second one, and so forth. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, a sub 1 would be 2 raised to the first. Again, a sub 1, we put a, the indexes right here, and the index is right there. So I'm going to put in a 1 here and a 1 there. So 2 to the first power, that's just a plain old 2. If I plug in a 2, um, so a 2 would go right here and a 2 would go, go right there. So that would be 2 squared. So this is going to end up being 4. And if I plug in a 3, so the, x, the index is 3, the exponent is 3. So this is going to be 2 to the third. So I end up with 8. And then you can probably guess what the next one's going to be, but I'll go ahead and write it out. So again, if I have a sub n equals 2 to the n, if I put a 4 right here in the index, in that subscript right here, I need to put a 4 right here in the exponent. So this is going to be 2 raised to the fourth, and so that's going to be 16. So you'll notice what's happening right here. You can kind of tell. Now this one you'll notice is it's a little bit different. Um, we've got a weird exponent right here, so we need to be careful with this. So again, I'm going to write down um, b sub 1 and I'm going to write down b sub 2 and b sub 3 and b sub 4. Again, I like writing those out because then I know exactly what I'm going to plug in. So this is going to be b sub 1 is, I've got a negative 3 and I do 1 up here minus 1. 
So the index goes right here and it goes right there. Just like the formula says, we put it in the index down here and then the index up there. So uh, one minus one is zero, so I get negative three. Again, that's in parentheses, that would be raised to the zero. So that's gonna be a one. So the first one in the sequence is a one. So let's find the next one. Again, I'm gonna plug the index in right here. So I'm gonna put a two right there and I'm gonna put a two up there in the exponent. So this is going to be b sub two is equal to negative three raised to the two minus one. So that's going to be negative three, two minus one is one. So negative three raised to the first, that's going to be negative, whoops, negative three. Okay, the next one. Um, the third one, I'm just going to plug the index up here in the exponent. So this is going to be negative three raised to the three minus one. So you'll notice that every single time what's happening is the exponent is one less than the number that I plug in. So I plugged in a one, I got a zero. I plugged in a two, I got a one. I plugged in a three, I got a negative one. Or sorry, plugged in a three, I got a two right here. So this is gonna be negative three squared. So I end up with a nine. And then this next one, if we wanted to, we could maybe just skip right here. Negative three, the exponent should be one less than that. Let's just double check and make sure because the formula says I take whatever the index is and I subtract one from it. Four minus one, of course, would be three. So we've got that in good shape. Negative three raised to the third. Three negatives, three threes, that's gonna be negative 27, okay? So we've got this formula that follows kind of, kind of a goal pattern. This is kind of an interesting pattern, different than uh, anything that we've seen before. And then we've got the next one. And if you feel like you need to grab a calculator in order to do this one, you're welcome to. We're gonna find C1, C2, C3 and C4. So we're gonna do 400 and then this is going to be one half raised to the first. So this is just gonna be a half. So half times uh, 400 is gonna be 200. So I'm gonna put a comma right here. This is going to be, we're gonna plug in a two. So this is gonna be 400 and then this is gonna be one half raised to the second. Now remember up above, we did one half raised to the second uh, it was negative one half, but that uh, is still uh, one fourth right here. So four times one fourth, this is gonna end up being 100. The next one is gonna be 400, and then we're gonna one, one half raised to the third. Uh, if we raise one half to the third, if it was positive, it would end up being positive one eighth. So we're gonna get 400 times one eighth, and one eighth of 400 is 50. Now I'm hoping you can kind of see what the pattern is. We've got 200 then 100, then 50. So you'll notice it's not going down by the same amount every time, but there is a bit of a pattern there. Let's see, it's basically getting cut in half every time. So I'm gonna take a guess that this next one's 25. I'm gonna go ahead and circle this and let's see if that works out. This would be 400 and then one half raised to the fourth. So this would be 400. And again, if we had any troubles with this, We'll just grab a calculator and uh, plug it in there and see what we end up with. So I'm gonna clear this off. I'm gonna do 400 and then I'm gonna do parentheses. Uh, it doesn't matter if I put in a fractional or a decimal. So I'm just gonna put in 0.5 and I'm gonna raise that to the fourth. Hop down here, make sure that it looks okay. Hit enter and we end up with 25. So that's the right one. So again, you'll notice that these are very different than the ones that we've uh, done in the past. With arithmetic, they went up or down by the same amount. Um, they had a common difference. So we were adding the same number every time. These problems are different. What we're doing here is we are multiplying, okay? So we multiply to get from one term to the next term. So instead of having a common difference, we say these have a common ratio. And we call this type of sequence, the special name for this is what we talked about above. Above, we call this a geometric sequence. Now we're gonna figure out a formula based off uh, what we kinda of did yesterday when we were determining what uh, the formula was for arithmetic sequences. So here's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna say, what is the common ratio um, between the first term and the second term? A sub one and A sub two. So remember, ratio means fraction. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna say, how did I go from the first one to the second one? Well, I take the second one, I put it on the top, and I take the first one, I put it on the bottom, and I end up with a three. Now, before I do the next one, notice that what we're doing here is we're multiplying by three to go from 10 to 30 to 90 to 270 and so forth. So how do I go from 30 to 90? 
I times by three. Now, if you can spot that pattern just by looking at it, then that's great. You're lucky. Um, if you can't, you're always going to take any term and you're, you're going to divide by the one before it. So that's why I'm saying, hey, if you want to know what the common ratio is, take the second one divided by the first one. If you want to know what the common ratio is, take the third one. The third one here happens to be 90 and divide it by 30, you end up with three. So the common ratio on this one is three. And again, a little formula here is you can take any term divided by the one before it. So a quick way to find the, the ratio for uh, a geometric sequence is take the second one and just divide it by the first one. So here's the formula that we can use for this. So I'm going to slide down just a little bit. Um, and it looks like this. So again, this is the nth term, uh, a sub n, and then this is a naught. And remember, we call that the initial value, and you can always find it doing this. You take the first one and you divide by the whatever the common ratio was. So we basically go backwards in the pattern. Um, uh, by dividing by r. And I'm going to fix that typo right there. Okay, so this r is the common ratio. Common ratio. And then we raise it to the nth power. So again, that kind of makes sense for nth term and stuff like that. So if we want to find the nth term, we're going to take that initial term, that zeroth term, and we're going to multiply it by the common ratio raised to the n. Um, and when I say we're kind of going backwards, it works like this in order to find that, that uh, the zeroth term, the initial value. So to go this way, to go forward in the sequence, we're multiplying by three every single time. Well, if we want to go backwards in the sequence, then what we're going to do is we're going to divide by three. So if I divide by three on this one, I happen to get an ugly number. I, get, I end up with 10 thirds, but that's okay. Um, that's going to be our formula. So our formula is going to look like this the nth one would be the zeroth one, 10 thirds, and then we would times that by whatever the ratio is, and we're gonna raise that to the n, okay? So that would be our formula for that first one. Now, if we're doing a recursive formula, what we were just working with was a general formula. If we wanna find the recursive one, Recursive ones, again, easy to get, kind of a pain in the butt to use. A sub one, that's gonna be the first term. We have to know what the first term is. Okay, and then to get to the next term, we take the one right before it and then we times by the common ratio. So notice I've got this arrow going to both of those. So I'm gonna slide down here so we can still see these. Um, and then we'll come up with both the general formula and the recursive formula for these ones. Now, before we write these down, uh, it's a good idea to make sure that you're using parentheses in these problems to make sure that um, it, it looks like it should and everybody understands exactly what you mean. So here's what we're going to do. Again, we're going to write out a couple of these. Uh, the first one is a 2, and then the common ratio is 2. So what that means is we're going to times by 2. So the next one's going to be 4 times by 2 again. The next one's going to be 8 times by 2 again. The next one's going to be 16. Again, you don't have to do that, but it can be really helpful. So what we're going to do is we're going to write down the nth term. So again, the nth term is the zeroth term. Oh, I got to find that one. So I got to go backwards. I'm going to change colors for this one just to kind of uh, make it stand out just a little bit. So to go this way, we're timesing by two every single time. So to go to the other way, we're going to divide by two. Two divided by two is one. So that means that zeroth term, that initial value is just going to be a one. Then we take, just like the formula says, we're going to take the common ratio, we're going to put it in parentheses, so that's going to be a 2, and we're going to raise it to the n. Now, we normally don't have a 1 sitting out there, so we'll probably clean this up just a little bit. We're going to write it like this, a sub n equals 2 to the n. Now, you'll notice that this formula looks really familiar. It's the one at the top of the page. It's the first geometric sequence that we did, 2, 4, 8, uh, 16, and so forth. So now we can go backwards. We can be given a formula, we can produce the sequence, or we can be given the sequence and we can produce the formula. Okay, so the uh, recursive definition works like this. Again, we have to tell it a first term. First term is 2. They gave us that right here. And then to get to the next one, we take the previous one. So that's going to be the n sub a sub n minus 1. And then we multiply it by the common ratio. Now, it's not a bad idea to put the 2 out in front. Uh, that's a totally acceptable way to do that because we're just multiplying by it. It makes it look like a, a coefficient, if you will. The other way to do it would be do, to do this. Take the previous one and then multiply it by 2. 
Um, again, that use of parentheses on both of these formulas. Uh, not a huge fan of this one. I kind of like doing it that way, even though putting the two at the end kind of matches up with the, the general formula for arithmetic. So let's do this next one here. So again, uh, we'll write out a few terms. So this is going to be negative 14 is the first one. And then the common ratio is negative 1. Now that doesn't happen very often. So what we do is we multiply by negative 1. So I'm going to multiply by negative 1. So that's going to give us 14, because a negative times a negative would be a positive. Then I'm going to multiply by negative 1. So that's going to be a negative 14. And I'm going to multiply by negative 1 again. So that's going to be a positive 14. So we just kind of alternate back and forth between the two of those. So the formula is going to look like this. Um, B sub n is going to be, let's see, the zeroth one. Oh, I've got to find that. Well, let's go backwards. Let's not multiply by negative 1. Let's divide by negative 1. Well, something interesting happens here. If you take a negative and divide it by a negative, you end up with a positive. So the initial value, that zeroth term, if you want to think of it that way, um, that is 14. And then the common ratio is negative 1, and we're going to raise it to the n. So we'll circle that. We've got that one all figured out. Got that one done. So now we just need to write down the recursive formula. So we tell it the first term. They told us what the first term is. It's negative 14. And then to get to the next one, we take the one right before it. So that's going to be b sub n minus 1. And then we multiply it by negative 1. So if you wanted to, I suppose you could put that in parentheses. But with a negative out front, people usually don't confuse those. So there we are. Now, again, if you know it's geometric, then you can use these formulas. To find the common ratio, you can do a2 divided by a1. So take the second term and divide it by the first term. If you want to find the zeroth term, that initial value, you can take the first term and divide it by the common ratio. And then the formula, the general formula, is always going to look like this. It's going to be a sub n is equal to a naught times r raised to the n. Now, I know these formulas are a lot to keep track of, and your head might be swimming right now. We'll take enough time on this to practice, go over plenty of these examples. It is one of those ideas that needs to get in your head and cook for a while, and we're going to do some examples on the back side. So let's take a look at that. So I've got the formulas at the top all ready to go. Again, we're dealing with geometric sequences, but we still have two different types of formulas. So I'm going to highlight those so we can come up with those really quickly. Um, so it says, for example, for find a general and a recursive formula for each sequence. Um, remember, the other names for general formulas, they would be explicit. So we could call them an explicit formula. Got to make that look right and work on my penmanship here. Explicit, or we could call it an nth term formula. Okay. Now, it's much better when we're doing these problems to think of everything as multiplication, whether they're getting bigger or smaller. If they're getting bigger, we're going to have a common ratio that's bigger than 1. If they're getting smaller, we're going to have a common ratio that's less than 1. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. We're going from 4 to 20 to 100 to 500. Hopefully, you can see what the common ratio is. If you can't, we're always going to take the second one. So this is the first one, and this is the second one. We're going to take the second one, and we're going to divide by the first one. That's going to be 4. So we end up with a common ratio of 5. We're also going to go backwards in the sequence. So instead of multiplying by 5 every single time, we're going to go backwards, and we're going to divide by 5. So that zeroth term is going to be the first one divided by the common ratio. So it just so happens that we end up with a fraction. It doesn't simplify. That's OK with us. So we're, again, we're using this formula right here. So it's going to be a sub n is equal to the zeroth term, 4 fifths. And then it's going to be the common ratio, which is 5, raised to the n. And we circle that, and we are done with the general formula. Now we're going to do the explicit one. That's going to be a sub 1. And then this is going to be the first term. That's just 4. To get to the next term, we're going to take the one before it. And you'll notice, because we're doing all uh, geometric on this one, I just saved space to put that, uh, that coefficient, that common ratio out in front there. Common ratio is 5. So I'm going to put a 5 right there. And I'm going to make it look like 5. And we're going to circle that. And we're done there. OK, we'll take a look at this one. So we've got 27 and 9 and 3. So this is the first one, and this is the second one. You'll notice a bit of a pattern. And again, in, in this uh, section, they're all geometric. 
So I'm going to figure out the common ratio by taking the second one, which is 9, and divided by the first one, which is 27. And I'm going to use b's on this just to make it, make it look right. Okay. So we've got 9 over 27, which if you reduce that, 9 goes into 9 once, 9 goes into 27 three times. So here's our common ratio. So this is going to be, uh, whoops, b sub n is going to be equal to, let's see, let's put the common ratio in parentheses, raise that to the n, so I'm using this formula right here, the general formula, and I need the zeroth term, so I need to go backwards. So instead of multiplying by one-third every single time, what I need to do is I need to divide by one-third. Now, if you need a calculator to do that, that's totally fine. We don't divide by a fraction, we actually flip it over and multiply by the reciprocal, so 27, divided by one-third is the same as 27 multiplied by its reciprocal. So we should end up with 81. I'm going to grab a calculator and just make sure that uh, we got that. So I'm going to do 27 and I'm going to divide by, um, we can even put, in, put it in as a fraction, divided by 1 over 3 and hop out here, hit enter, we get 81. So that means this uh, coefficient out front, that initial value, that zeroth term if you want to think of it that way, the zeroth term is 81. And again, you can always find it by doing um, b naught would be equal to the first term divided by the common ratio. So in our case, we took uh, 27 and divided by uh, 1 third. Okay, uh, the recursive formula. We have to tell it where to start. Start at the first one, which is 27. And then we tell it how to get to the next one. To get to the next one, you take the one right before it. So the one right before the nth one is the n minus 1. And then we multiply by the common ratio of 1 third. If you want to throw a dot in there, uh, totally OK. But there's our, our formula. Now again, it's important to think of these as multiplication each time. So we're multiplying by 1 third. It's a number smaller than 1. So the numbers are getting smaller. And here, the, we're multiplying by a number bigger than 1, so it's getting bigger. And then we'll slide down and take a look at these guys right here. So these are uh, applications of uh, example four. So it says, find the indicated term of each sequence. Would a general or recursive formula be better? Yeah, generals work much, much better uh, than, uh, than uh, recursive ones. And again, if somebody says, hey, I want uh, n equals 12, when we're dealing with sequences, if anybody else looked at this, they'd go, all right, n is equal to 12, or b sub 9, okay, what does that mean? Well, what this means is this is the 12th term, and what uh, b sub 9 means is this is the 9th term. So we're just going to take those formulas and we're going to plug in. So this is going to be a sub 12 is going to be 4 fifths, and then we're going to take 5 and raise it to the 12th. And for the other one, we're going to say b sub 9 is equal to 81, and then we're going to have 1 third raised to the 9th. And we're going to grab the calculator and have it figure these out for us. So I'm going to slide over here, and if you want to use um, fractions, that's okay with me. Um, totally all right. I'm actually just going to type it in like this. I'm going to type in 4 divided by 5, then I'm going to put 5 in parentheses, and I'm going to raise that to the 12th. Now, the only thing that's different about this is I put in 4 divided by 5 instead of 4 fifths. But let's take a look and see what the answer is. Okay, what do we got here? 195,312,500. 193. What was that again? Let's see what that was. Three, uh, 195,312. Okay, 195,312,500 on that one. Okay, so that's the 12th one. And then on this one, uh, let's see. I'm going to see if we can get away with this again. I'm going to clear this off, and I'm going to do 81. And instead of grabbing the fraction palette and everything, I'm just going to do 1 divided by 3. And I'm going to raise that to the 9th. Whoops, got to come back here. Got to raise that to the 9th. Make sure that looks right. Looks okay. And hit enter. Now, the calculator is going to give me a decimal, but I think we're going to get lucky on this one. Remember, if you hit the math button, the very first thing on there is change the answer to a fraction. So if I have that changed to a fraction, oh, look, changed it to 1 over 243. So the answer on this one is 1 over 200, whoops, 243. That's what the ninth term is.
Okay, so a good little trick right there. Um, and then the last bit on this is number five. It says write the first three terms of each geometric sequence, or sorry, the next three terms, and then write down a nth term formula for this. So on example 5a, let's see, this is 1, negative 2, 4, negative 8. Let's see if we can spot the pattern. Well, this is 1, 2, 4, 8. So the next one's going to be 16, then 32. So it's, it's doubling every single time. So the next one's going to be 64 after that. It said write three of them. But you'll notice that it goes positive, then negative, positive, negative, positive. That one should be negative right there. All right. So once we've got that, then I can figure out what the common ratio is so we can come up with the nth term formula. Common ratio is always going to be the first one, sorry, the second one divided by the first one. So that's going to be negative 2 divided by 1. So that's negative 2. So we've got our common ratio. And then we can find out what a naught is by taking the first one and dividing by r. So the first one is 1, and we want to divide that by negative 2. Okay, so that's the zeroth term. So a sub n is going to equal the initial value, that initial term. That's going to be negative 1 half. We're going to put the ratio in parentheses, and we're going to raise it to the n. And the ratio on this one is negative 2. So that right there is our formula. And then let's take a look at this one. We've got 16, 4, 1, negative 1 fourth. Now, if we write out a couple more in the pattern, maybe we can do that right away. Maybe we can't. If we can't, then let's do this. So the ratio is going to be the second one. So I'm going to do b sub 2 over b sub 1. So that's going to be negative 4 over 16. That's going to be negative 1 fourth. So negative 1 fourth right there. That is the common ratio. That's what we're multiplying by every time. And again, the reason it's getting smaller is not because we're dividing by 4, although you could think of it that way. What we're doing is we're multiplying by negative 1 fourth. So we're going to multiply by negative 1 fourth again. And if I multiply a negative by a negative, it's going to turn into a positive. And 1 times 1 would be 1 on the top. And 4 times 4 would be 16 on the bottom. So you'll notice what's happening now is it's, let's see, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. Whoops, the next one's going to be, put a comma here, negative. And then the one after that's going to be positive. So you'll notice that we just have ones on the top. And if I multiply this by 4, I get 64. And if I multiply that by 4 again, I end up with 256. And again, if you need a calculator to, to grab those numbers, basically what I did right here is I did negative 4th times negative 1 fourth. And negative times negative would be positive. 1 times 1 would be 1. And 4 times 4 on the bottom would be 16. Okay? All right. So we've got the common ratio. Now we need to figure out um, what that zeroth term would be because this is the first one. And this is the second one. Let's see, if we were going backwards, a couple different ways you could figure this out. I'm going to figure this out the long way. Um, the initial one would be, and again, I need to use a B on this one, would be the first one. So B sub 1 divided by R. That's going to be 16 divided by negative 1 fourth. And I'm hoping you remember um, how we deal with these. This is a complex fraction. We usually flip it over and we multiply. So that would be multiplying by negative 4. So if you thought of this way as dividing by 4 every single time, which I suppose you could, going this way, we'd actually multiply by negative 4. Um, or you could think of it as dividing by negative 1 fourth. Okay? So I'll let the calculator figure that out. Um, if you already know what it is, that's awesome. I'm going to do 16 divided by, and I'm going to put this in parentheses, negative 1 divided by 4. Again, feel free to throw those uh, in the calculator as fractions. I end up with negative 64. So negative 64 is the initial value. So we're going to say um, b sub n is equal to that initial value of negative 64. And then we're going to take the negative 1 fourth, which is our ratio, and we're going to raise that to the n. OK? All right. So that is the last of the practice problems. But I do have a couple of other quick questions for you. Here's what we've got so far. We have two types of formulas. The two types of formulas are general and recursive. And I'm going to change colors here. So two types of formulas, general and recursive. And we have two types of sequences. The two types of sequences are arithmetic and geometric. 
And the last thing is, uh, what's the difference between an arithmetic and geometric sequence? That's really how we get from one term to the next, and it's also how we can be really successful in this unit. Again, this takes a while for these things to sink in and get used to them. Really weird vocabulary, really weird notation. So how do you get from one term to the next term in an arithmetic sequence? Well, here's the big deal. We add the same thing. So add the same number. So I'll just put uh, a hashtag right here, okay? Pound sign. So to go from one term to the next in a geometric sequence, then we multiply this by the same number. We put by in here, by the same number. Okay, hopefully uh, this is starting to sink in. Uh, don't give up if it's not, we'll spend plenty of time on this. Uh, these are really good brain stretching activities. Uh, really check to see if you can learn some vocabulary and follow formulas. All right, good luck on the assignment.